Welcome to Run With It, BC's only running fitness and health show. On today's show, we were in conversation with Steve Darling, co-anchor of the Global Morning News. And coming up later on the show, we have Doctor's Corner, so stay tuned for that. And we'll have our Train Like a Pro segment. But first, let's go to our in-studio interview. With me in the studio is Yvonne Hoganis, owner of Mallory's Fashion Network. About three years ago, she launched Firmer Energy Wear, a clothing line that fits a healthy lifestyle. She is here today to talk about our passion for fashion and how our clothing products are where health meets fashion. She also talks about the projects she's involved in that truly fuel her tank. Welcome to the show, Yvonne. Thank you, Christine. So when did you know you had a flair for fashion? Well, I think I always knew I had a love for fashion and fabrics. I was brought up in a home where my mother was an extremely good seamstress, and so we were always around sewing and fabrics, and there were seven girls in our family, so she had a lot of girls to sew for, and um, so we were always around sewing. But I also know I was kind of hooked in high school because my f some of the favorite times of the year for me was right after high school was done, my sisters and I would go to the fabric stores and we'd spend a whole day sourcing fabrics to make our next wardrobe for the next season. And I'd spend the whole summer designing my wardrobe for the next year of high school. And that was one of my greatest things I looked forward to, one of the things that was my highlight of a year. So I knew I was hooked. I also worked in a high-end um, clothing company in the eastern part of the United States for a couple of years and absolutely loved my work there as well. It takes a special skill or a gift to do that. Yeah. I know I can't sew. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it is. It's another, um, yeah, it's definitely something that you learn and, and you either love it or you don't, I think. I think it's one or the other. Yes, and Yvonne, when did you, um, found, you, know, you founded Mallory's? When did that happen? That, we opened the store almost 18 years ago, and so it would have been 19 years ago that I started thinking about it, um, putting the, the dream into action. I always wanted to have my own clothing store or to design a line uh, of, of clothing, but um, I decided I wanted to open a store because I really do love the marketing business aspect of it, and I think it's very difficult to be the business at marketer as well as the designer. That is a big challenge to start off with. So I decided to be the person that opens a store and I wanted to feature Vancouver designers. And as you know, about 18, 19 years ago, most Vancouver designers were quite unknown at the time. And I found that very interesting that in our own backyard, we had amazing talent, but people didn't know about them. So I was the first really to start to market our own Vancouver talent. And I did a lot of trunk shows at the beginning to bring the designers out to do fashion shows in the store, educate my clientele on our local talent. And what came with that was unique designs, but also a lot of servicing. Because when you're working with your own designers in your backyard, the clients get amazing servicing and, and they loved it. So that's where I began. Yeah, so now your Firma Energy Wear, tell us about that. Well, that was a launch that happened about five years ago. Um, I started to um, be interested in looking at this new smart fiber technology that was introduced to me about five years ago. And um, before that, I was designing a custom fitted bra line, which is another whole area of my life. Um, so I was already connecting health and fashion through our tab custom fitted bra line. But I was introduced to this new smart technology fabric that will enhance the health of the body just by wearing it. And it was brand new, just being introduced to North America, and we were fortunate to be given the rights to market and design this line of clothing um, for North America. So it was very exciting for me because it really fit into what I was working on, which is connecting health and fashion. And uh, so the line is called Firma energy wear, and it's an acronym, it has a meaning. Yes. <laughs> so FIRMA stands for Far Infrared Mel Metabolic Acceleration. And did you think of the name? Yes. Ooh. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. And so we wanted to try to communicate what our line is about, but also to give it a name that does, does give um, an essence to what we are. Um, as you know, Christine, in the last well, a couple of years or even five years, active wear and sportswear has become a huge market um, segment of, of growth and people are wearing it all the time for lifestyle. So 
the activewear sportswear um, design market has become very interesting because the consumer is looking for fashion, but they're also looking for function. And as you know, that's really been exploding. But the very uh, intriguing part of being introduced to this fabric was that now we can also add the benefit of healing. Mm -hmm. And to be able to add the benefit of healing to anything you're wearing all day long was really exciting for me. And so the way it works, just in a short form, is basically our fabric that we make all of our firma energy wear from is made from a smart technology where they, we take active biocrystals, which are real minerals, they're embedded in the fabric, so you can't wash it out, you can't wear it out. It's now part of the DNA of the fabric. You put it on your body, your body heat goes into the fabric, and instead of passing straight through it, it stops and absorbs into the crystals, the minerals, and they emit back to your body the far infrared energy rays. And that's what is the metabolic accelerator, because far infrared energy is very healing, so it immediately starts to increase our metabolism, which of course gives the body many, many health benefits, including you know reducing toxicity, joint pain, swelling, uh, thermal regulation, um, you know energy, so many things that are enhanced because of the farm for energy. I mean, it's for everyone. It's, it's for everyone. We we really say if you want to wear something that is fashionable, mm -hmm. functional, healing. Um, looks amazing. It's really for anybody. But our target market, I would say, is 25 and on up mm -hmm. would be our target market. It's like going for that run and you going to a coffee shop and looking, you know, great. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. You don't, you don't look like you have on, so to say, <laughs> orthotic compression wear. And that's what's very exciting is we're changing the whole idea of having to wear compression wear because you're trying to heal or you know, reduce swelling, but it, it looks orthotic, it looks um, uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Now you, don't, you can wear firm can't energy tell. wear and you can't Where tell. Where can you buy your product? Well, we are located in many um, retailers throughout Canada and also we have flagship stores in the US that are starting off, but if you go to our website at www.firmaenergywear.com, Mm -hmm. You will see our locator and all of our locations there. And of course, you can buy online as well. Now, Yvonne, you also have educational fashion shows. Tell us about that. Well, we do. We do them here and there. And <laughs> yes. Christine, you were one of our beautiful <laughs> models. <laughs> we did it. Uh, we had one in the Cloverdale Pharmasave. And this is just a sample of what we do in quite a few venues. Um, we will be at the BMO Marathon awesome. here, and we'll be on stage doing an, an educational seminar on Friday night, so just so that can be noted. But um, basically what we do is we want to educate because it is, as you can hear, a very educational product. There's knowledge that needs to be known about it because if you just touched it, you think, wow, this feels good, but you wouldn't know what's in it and mm -hmm. what it's going to do for you. So it allows me to educate through PowerPoint or other pre ways of getting the message across. And then we have the show, which is the fashion show, where you can see the garments on, you can see how beautiful they look, the fashion behind them, and people really relate to that, and they, they really enjoy it. We always have a very good response. Afterwards. And you're getting the word out. Exactly. And you're helping people. Exactly. And that makes you feel great. It makes and... me feel wonderful. So tell us about other projects that you're involved in. Well, You're involved in many, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, besides my firm of energy where every day balancing me and grounding me, I, I really find I need to be doing things that give back to the community to really balance my life and ground me as well. And um, two that I love, I, I work with a, an association in Mexico where we go down every year um, for a full weekend. And uh, it's just north of Puerto Vallarta. We, um, we, basically are able to fit over 500 breast cancer survivors every weekend. We fit them in our bras, but we also give them all of our sleeves, compression sleeves from Firma to um, help with lymphedema. And just being able to help our sisters down there and see their, them transform in a day from feeling very undervalued to feeling very overvalued by the end of the day, it's, it's wonderful. So that's one thing that I do every year. And the other thing is we have a I'm part of a board called uh, SAS, which is Servants Anonymous, but it's a home in a school that we have in South Surrey for the girls that are working every day to get out of homelessness, addiction, and human trafficking here. 
and we bring them in and we help restore them, give them dignity, value, education. And in sustaining that, we opened a secondhand boutique across the store from Mallory's that helps to sustain that um, organization. And that's another project I thoroughly enjoy being a part of. And it fuels your tank. It fuels my tank. <laughs> so being so busy, how do you uh, keep healthy? Like, what do you Well, do? yeah, I think that's a struggle for all of us <laughs> yes. because when we're busy, there's, um, there's that stress factor that just creeps in no matter what. Yes. But um, I think just like, Christine, what you, you talk about and, and you also demonstrate well, it's very important to always get out and do some exercise or walk or run, which I work on doing every day um, somewhere along the way. And I also always tell everybody, I used to not value sleep very much. I thought it was a waste of time and we had way too much to do, so why sleep much? But I've kind of changed my thought process on that. I found out I, have, I feel much healthier, much more awake and, and able to do everything I want if I get enough sleep. So I've kind of really started to be the advocate for go to bed on time and get your sleep. Yes. And, and eat well, yeah. That's great. I want to thank you very much for coming on the show, Yvonne. Yeah, well, my pleasure. And now let's go to our Train Like a Pro segment. Check this out. So, Pat, welcome to Run With Ed. Thank you. I understand you are a former National Bobsled member. How did you go from that as a professional athlete to a trainer for the Vancouver Canadians? Well, it kind of started in university. I attended the University of Guelph and I was an all-Canadian track athlete there. Um, and I was fortunate to be given an opportunity to try out for the national team and, and working with our coaches there. I uh, had the opportunity to work with the strength coaches at the National Sports Centre and, and gaining their insights and, and learning what they do was of, of high interest to myself. And when I finished there, I uh, reached out to a few universities and was given an opportunity at the University of Michigan to work. And then from there with the New York Jets and the NFL and uh, just reaching out to, to coaches, I was given an opportunity with the Toronto Blue Jays. And uh, two years later, I'm, I'm here with the Vancouver Canadians. So tell us about the training. Uh, so everything we do is kind of position specific. Uh, we have a program for our position players, we have a program for our relief pitchers, and we have a program for our starting pitchers. Uh, and everything we do in those programs tries to prepare those players for their tasks on the field. Uh, with our position players, we try and do total body workouts where they're, they're doing everything from head to toe. We try and get them in the weight room two to three times a week. We incorporate running, um, a lot of sprinting, things that are going to translate to what they do on the field. Um, and that's the same with our, our pitchers. Uh, we try and incorporate movements and running programs that are going to help them on the field, improve their endurance, improve their strength, things that are going to put them in a position to not only stay healthy, but to excel on the field. How has the training techniques evolved since you've been a trainer? Like um, for me, it's a little bit different. Um, the philosophies that I trained under as an athlete are a little bit different than what we use here with, with baseball players. Again, we're trying to put our players in a position to not only be successful today, but to be successful two, three years down the road and to ultimately get to the big league level where they can help our organization and they can prolong their careers. So it's a big um, risk to reward that we look at in and trying to find what the the most what exercises we can use will be most optimal for their performance. So there hasn't been a ton of change. It's again just finding what's ideal for the sport, for the athlete, and for the situation. Mm -hmm. And if people want tickets, where can they go? Um, the box office here at Nat Bailey Stadium. Um, you can, I believe, phone in, you can buy them online, you can come right here to the stadium and pick them on up. Yeah, I'm curious to know how many people can you sit in this? Um, I believe on our sold out nights it was 6,013 people. Wow. So it's, it's, it's a great crowd, great atmosphere, and, and, and it's, it's a pretty fantastic place to be. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Welcome back to Doctor's Corner, Paul. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure being back. Thank you. So being an active isn't healthy for anyone. Uh, absolutely. And, um, I, you know, specifically, uh, you know, one of the groups of people that I really have an interest in being one is seniors. Uh, and, and convincing my fellow seniors to be more active. And... One thing I want to do, I want to say, is that the seniors today are a lot more active than the seniors were when I think of my dad being turning 70. Um, but it still needs a lot of improvement, and 
and it's really important for their quality of life. And that's really what I want to stress is quality of life. So, you know, there are a lot of myths around seniors and, and, and exercise. And so the first one is that I'm too old to get started. Uh, or it's too late and why should I start now? Or I'm, I'm, uh, I've got too many illnesses that st stops me from exercising. Or, um, uh, you know, I've never exercised my life and, you know, I, I just don't see any reason for it. You know, when you look at all those myths, they're just myths. And we all can, if, I mean, if we are mentally capable of understanding what exercise is, we're all capable of doing a level of exercise. And so those, those, those sort of excuses aren't really valid. The, the big thing is, is how do we start? So if I've never really exercised or haven't exercised for the last 40 years or 50 years or 60 years since I've played college football, um, how do I start now? And how am I motivating myself to get to doing that when everybody else around me is being sedentary? And we talked about the problems of sitting. Well, here we have those problems of sitting as well as the problems of the medical problems that are already with a lot of our seniors. And so that's where any kind of activity, any kind of activity that you can make yourself do is important. So a good start is by just moving around in your apartment, moving around more to walk in your apartment. Uh, when you're walking down uh, you know, to the yard or to the kitchen, to make sure that you take a few stairs on the way um, and, and to, to do those walks more often. If you're actually chair bound, there are many kinds of exercises and videos of exercises and videos of for exercises for seniors that are, on, uh, that are on the internet, which are very clear and, and, and to the point and very helpful. So if you're not facile with the computer, <laughs> is to get your grandkids to show you and, uh, and they can get them for you. And then to get started, once, once you get started, you're gonna see some of the positive benefits of exercise. And if you had a garden, go back out in that garden. Yes. You know, if there's, a, if there's a park near you, walk to the park, pay attention to the people, get interested in what the activities are around you. Get sort of motivated with the surroundings. If you have a pet, that's even more wonderful because yes. then you're, you've got this partner that you can go with and uh, be attentive to your environment. Um, increasing your social scope of friends so that you have a group of people that you go to do your activities with. So not only are you doing an exercise, but you're doing it on, by the by because you're enjoying the conversation. And so those are the kinds of things you get you started. And, and then once you get started, you're going to start realizing some of the benefits. And the benefits, uh, you know, are huge. So there's the physical ones. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be you're going to be more likely to be active. You're going to be feel better. Mm -hmm. You're going to have more energy. Um, once you get going beyond the fact of just getting moving, and you're actually going to do some exercise to increase your muscle mass. And by that mean I'm, you're not going to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> But you're not going yes. to be fading away and getting skinnier and, and flabbier, but you're going to have some muscle mass, which will really improve your whole physiology of metabolism and, and be much better for your health so that you probably can prolong your life, but you're certainly going to have a better quality of life for the time period that you have. <clears throat> And then you also get away from that whole feeling of fear of doing activities. So even going down the stairs that you're going to stumble or that you're going to fall and, 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 and have a fall. So that risk is reduced. And then there's the whole psychological mental improvements. You're going to sleep better. You're, you're going to feel better. You're going, your mood's going to improve. Because with exercise, you're, you're a runner. You know you're the, the sort of the energy you get from your endorphins, how that really makes you feel good. Well, you can do that too if, as a senior. There's no reason you can't and to get those benefits. Um, and, and the all-around well-being is so important. You know, you become a role model <clears throat> to your grandchildren, and it gives you that confidence. And so there are so many benefits. That's right. You know, that, that's one of the ways of getting started. So if you have a family with grandchildren, 
getting out with them with their activities, just walking to the park where they're playing ball or, um, you know, actually if you're still driving, to drive them to their activities and, and throw the ball with them. And, when, you know, when we're talking about off-air, one of those problems that seniors have, and I'm a senior, and we're talking about um, my wanting to jump into the boat um, during the summer, and this is the first time it's ever happened. I usually it was automatic. I just jump in the boat. But when I got to the boat, all of a sudden I'm thinking, yeah, I haven't done this for a year. And, you know, what if the boat rocks and I might fall out the side of the boat? <laughs> well, in fact, I jumped in the boat and I almost did fall out of the other boat. And I was so angry with myself. So I got in and out of the boat, in and out of the boat, in and out of the boat, until I could do it without thinking about it. And that's what one of the things that happens as we get older or don't do an activity for quite some time. That sort of uh, muscle memory, proprioceptive proprioception, that sort of ability to know what your muscles are doing and sending those messages uh, from your brain to your muscles to do what should be automatic, to repeat them again. And so you'll find when you first start exercising, there's a lot of sort of hesitancy about doing that, but all of a sudden your confidence builds and then you do that activity and you're, you're going to do that activity and more. And it just gets better and better and better. But you have to get past that first Fear. episodes of hesitancy yes. and not wanting to do it. Paul, are there a lot of um, programs out there for seniors? Uh, you know, compared to when my dad was 70 to now, there are a lot more programs. There's lots more information. Uh, there's, you know, when you take, sorry, the Surrey uh, community program, there's all kinds of things for seniors. So it's not just exercising, physical exercise, but exercising to go to yoga classes, to go to computer classes, to go to, you know, gardening classes, to learn how to do uh, photography. It's, you're, you're still having to do physical activity to get there, and then you're using your brain to do the activity, which is important in, in together. To answer your question, yes, there are more programs. And again, and again, to get your children to get on the internet, there are oodles of programs and videos of exercise programs to do, and the why is a good place to start. And to get started with a, a trainer that's used to working with seniors, mm -hmm. to work with some of those, so those problems that, and understand the problems that that senior uh, age group has in terms of getting started. And that's important. And you look fit. What do you? Do you to stay fit? Well, yeah, I do stay fit, and but you know, I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not a fanatic, um, but I do. I do. I do what's recommended. I do about five five days, at least thirty minutes at a time, um, every for five days a week, and then on the weekends I'm active doing gardening, boating, you know, hiking. So I never. I never turn down an opportunity to go out with the grandkids or the children. Um, I can't compete anymore exactly, but I can certainly still take part. Yes, and if um, a senior wants to engage in physical activity, see a doctor first. Yes, it's important, if you, if you, especially if you have medical problems, mm -hmm. to say, listen, I really want to embark on a program. And as I say, it doesn't matter how many meds you have, what medical condition, there are activities that you can do. Uh, but it's important to discuss with the doctor and then also to discuss with him some of the warning signs that he may pay attention to. So, for example, if I've had a history of uh, having angina or, or having heart attack with high blood pressure, you know, if you're doing something and you have really significant chest pain, what is that? Or is it just a feeling of lightheadedness and shortness of breath that I'm getting because I'm increasing my activity? To get some sort of idea of what symptoms I should be worried about and what symptoms I should be expecting. Well said. I want to thank you very much for coming on the show and I'd like to have you come back. It was my pleasure anytime. With me is Steve Darling, co-anchor of the Global Morning News. And he's here today to talk about his healthy lifestyle. Welcome, Steve. Oh, thanks very much for having me. So, Steve, when did you realize you needed to make a change? It's been coming over the last couple of years. It felt that, uh, you know, you get to a, you, you get sort of lost in life and you forget, you know, with two kids and a wife and a busy schedule at work and uh, outdoor play and you kind of forget to take care of yourself sometimes. So I got to a point where I felt like I needed to uh, make a change and that's when we decided to do it and it's not just me as my wife as well Jennifer she just decided that you know maybe it was the right time for us to do it but was it difficult just to 
change your whole healthy um, lifestyle? Yeah, yes and no. I, I'm pretty good at, uh, if I get a, a, some sort of a plan, I can stick to it really well. So I, I had a plan and, and the thing is you have to buy into it. That's the biggest mm. thing. If you're not 100% committed to it, it probably doesn't work. And I think that's where a lot of, a lot of people, and I'm not giving you advice in any way, <laughs> but for me, if I'm not 100% committed, then it probably wouldn't work. And so I think you need to be committed to what you're doing and you, and you have to believe in the philosophy of why you're doing it. And when we met the doctor, she was explaining it to us. And the program I did is, is, is a little controversial, and, but it, uh, we needed a kickstart. And that's what, that's what I look at it, at it was more of a kickstart than anything, leading on to healthier eating now and down the road. That was the biggest thing. So what tips could you share with our viewers on how to follow in your footsteps? Well, yeah, I, I, I don't like offering tips because I don't really know. I, I know it worked for me mm -hmm. um, and everybody's different. That's the whole thing. Like mm. there's never a, there's no cookie cutter way in doing something. Yes. It has to be, you have to do it yourself. But I, I haven't really changed. The only thing I've really changed is knowing more about food. And, and if there's anything I could offer, it's more that to understand what you what it is you're putting in your body and that that fresh is always better um, vegetables all that kind of stuff the, the the more fresh you can go the better it is the more green you can go the better it is so uh, you know there's no real magic fix for everyone it trust me it was not at times it's not easy because it's a lot of it's a lot of work but you got to find out what's right for you and that's the most important thing and you feel great and yeah. congratulations thanks. on losing that weight yeah. and yeah, thanks. thank you steve all right Thanks for watching. If you have a question or a comment on today's show, go to our website on the screen. Until next time, run with it.